Stop the insanity. Get focused on what really matters in life. Your faith, your family, your finances, and your future. Now sit back and change the trajectory of your life. This is Money for Life, brought to you by the 100-Year Saving Solution. Are you concerned about the markets? Stop taking unnecessary risks with your money while also getting great benefits. Visit us at 100yearsavings.com. Now, let's welcome your Money for Life hosts, Teresa Kuhn and Rick Sapio. Hello, everybody. This is Teresa Kuhn with my partner, Rick Sapio, and we are here for another edition of Money for Life. And today, we're going to begin the podcast with one of my favorite quotes. It's by Albert Einstein. And he said, the only thing that interferes with my learning is education. Now, before we ruffle some feathers, let's explain where we're coming from. I believe, and I've raised a 24 year old child and Rick has four kids in school. So much of what's supposedly education in our school system is really following an agenda. It's not about the child and what the child needs to navigate through the world with tools that really are relevant. And that's a position that I took 24 years ago when I had my son, and I believe it's even more so today. When my son was little, the homeschool revolution was just taking off. So many people around me were homeschooling. I chose not to do the traditional homeschooling. I did somewhat of a hybrid with my son. And the number one objective I had was I wanted my son to love to learn because I love to learn. I was super curious about everything. And if I knew my son liked to learn or loved to learn, then I knew that he would find a way in life to make a living and to be really good at whatever it is he chose to learn. Rick, what's your objective with your four kids as they're going through this educational system? As uh, I've mentioned on several podcasts, our goal is to raise independent, entrepreneurial self-sufficient, earning, God-fearing 18-year-olds. And to that end, uh, my wife and I pulled our two oldest out of school this year. And the year I'm talking about now is the year 2020 to 2021. And we decided to self-educate. Uh, and every Thursday morning, I spend three hours with them teaching them uh, something about life. And today happens to be a Thursday when we're recording. So they're age 10 and 12, fifth grade and seventh grade. They are not in formal school right now, which is unheard of. Neither my wife or I would ever have considered it. But due to some circumstances at the school, we thought now would be a good time to do it. And so we've hooked them up with people to teach them about business and finance and some formal things as well. But this morning I said, if you had your wish, we're at breakfast at a restaurant, what would you like me to teach you this year? And my 10-year-old said, I want to start my own company right now because I remember you telling me that I can't be an employee of a company, but I could be an owner of a company. And you may not know this, but it is legal and completely uh, acceptable in the United States to own a company at any age, but you can't be an employee until you reach a certain age. Basically what he wants to do is take what little money he's earning right now on his side jobs and put that into the account of the company that he starts in his name and from that company, he starts making investments because he wants to own a rental house and some other things. And that just brought so much joy to my heart that he's starting to think about how he could earn and grow a business so that he can contribute to society because he said, I want to give one quarter of everything I earn away. Now, you're not going to learn any of this in formal education. In fact, you and I have a mutual friend, Jim Scheel, who teaches the educational matrix. And he said uh, something like 3% of formal education is used later in life. 3%, 97% is what you learn elsewhere. And the three main buckets that they believe, which I also believe people need to know to navigate life are the buckets of financial intelligence, 
Number two, relationship skills. And number three, personal development, becoming a better person. Those three topics, those are what you need to navigate life. You know, when you first moved out of the house, you know, did you learn in school how to marry somebody and be committed for life or cook or clean or earn money or save money or invest money like we're talking about now? Or but the myriad of things you need to know to get through life? No, they don't teach you any of that crap. Teresa, why do you think that formal education teaches you none of the things that you know to actually be a contributing human being to society and live a happy, fulfilling life. What I'm about to say is a bit controversial and I believe it from the bottom of my heart, from the bottom of my soul, I absolutely believe this to be the case. I think there are those that set an agenda all over the world for the population. And I think they're the ones who say, hey, what's the objective for the population? What's the objective for the citizens of the United States. And this isn't really just for the US, because isn't it interesting how so many cultural things, um, philosophies, way of looking at life, thinking, isn't only in the United States, but at the same time globally. It like happens all at the same time. It's not by accident. If schools taught our students to be independent adults, if schools gave them the tools to navigate through life, they're not gonna need to look outside of themselves to solve problems. So consider this, Teresa, and this might help you. Parents exist to create independent children or should be focused on creating independent children. Governments exist to create dependent citizens. Isn't it interesting? Has anyone ever thought about that? The more independent you are, the happier your parents are or should be. The more dependent you are, the happier your government is. So families and government don't mesh, period. Governments exist to sustain and grow, right? And so at the expense of families. So, but let's go back to your point. I'm talking about a population that has to look outside of themselves for help and support for a handout. And, you know, who said that power corrupts Absolutely, and absolute power corrupts, right? Who said that? It's so true. When have you seen a government want less power? Never, ever. And so if we raise kids to be dependent on a system or dependent on something outside of them to live a life of just survival, right? Why would they teach kids in school about financial education? about starting your own business, about not being an employee, about relationships, about commitment, about how to raise a family, about how to cook and clean and take care of yourself. Why would you teach any of those skills? What's interesting is even the uh, myriad of different uh, nonprofit organizations that have been created over the years to teach entrepreneurship to school age children inside the formal education setting, even those organizations have become very politicized and very corrupt because it goes against the nature of the beast, right? The beast really wants to create dependency. How are you gonna go inside an organization creating dependency and try to teach entrepreneurship and independence? It doesn't work. I'm reminded of, I think Ronald Reagan said it. He said, a, a, a government committee is an eight-headed monster with no brain. Uh, and there's many different variations of that quote. But unfortunately, when you take a private, uh, for-profit, motivated company, they're going to come up with solutions far, far more robust, quicker, et cetera, than anything that the government can come up with. And by the way, Everybody knows that, but they still buy the nonsense that the government can handle economic issues or the government can handle medical issues. It can't. That's not what governments do. Governments exist. They don't create. They don't generate. They don't motivate. They just are this big blob that exists to get bigger and bigger and bigger over time. Just having skills to be emotionally independent, to be emotionally stable, to have good communication skills, 
those are tools, Rick, that help you navigate through life, no matter what happens in life. Why aren't we teaching those basic skills to our children? Why aren't the schools doing it? The schools are saying, you know, we've got to take over where the parents are not, uh, are not educating. We need to take over, but they take over and they're not teaching these skill sets to kids. Why is that? It goes back to the beast having to create dependency. And I would also argue, what kind of dependency are we talking about when it comes to emotional stability? How many people are on Prozac? How many kids are on Prozac? How many kids are on uh, you know, psychotropic drugs to keep them stable from an emotional and psychological perspective? It's insane the number of people that are addicted to those drugs. Mm -hmm. If we really wanted to solve that problem, Rick, that problem would be solved. I think humanity is brilliant at getting what they want. And the beast has exactly what they want. What do they want? They want a population that is addicted to psychotropic drugs. They want a population that is addicted to the government for handouts. They have a population that is trained to go inside and work a, a corporate box or a government box, right? How big is government today? Government is the number one employer in our country. It's all by design, Rick. And I know I sound a bit of a conspiracy nut, but look at the facts. Yeah, I mean, this has nothing to do with conspiracy. 40% of the population uh, is employed by the government and growing. Um, you know, just to give you an idea of what the alternative is to formal education, when you think about the educational matrix, and this is Jim Shields' work, and uh, it's funny, we met because we were collaborating on a uh, different education system for after high school. It would be like a one-year school to prep people for adulthood, which we called Lifestyle U. Uh, but the, the categories that people need to learn, uh, but they don't learn in school, I'll just read it out to you. When I said financial intelligence, that includes how to be an entrepreneur. You learn about money and how it works. The three main classes of wealth creation, understanding financial statements, return on investment and cash flow, healthy risk taking, innovation and technology, sales and marketing, self-sufficiency 101, the specialized skill principle, and service and contribution. Does that sound like anything you would learn in third, fourth, and fifth grade? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. And I have a business degree. I did not learn that in, in my, uh, I don't know, $40,000 worth of my university education. Didn't learn any of that. And unfortunately, this is stuff that we learn the hard way through just getting our brains beat in as adults. But if we could have learned it as children, like we learn a language as children, everybody learns their, their mother tongue, learning a language is not easy, but we learn it. Wouldn't it be great if this was baked into childhood? Let me go to this category number two. Things that you need later in life to survive that aren't taught in school, relationship skills. So relationship skills is the second category. Number one, building rapport, then communication skills, then listening skills, then understanding people, which I never learned personally, still have a hard time with that. Conflict resolution, then asking and offering help. Isn't that an interesting topic? Healthy boundaries, family rhythms, friendship, service and contribution. Again, they put service and contribution under each of the three categories. Let me jump right to personal development. It is so interesting to both of us how low the percentage is of the population that pursues personal growth opportunities. In fact, I read recently that only 14% of the entire population of the U.S. cares about, learns about, or reads about personal development. Personal development is all those skills you need to have more life fulfillment and get more stuff done. But under that category is purpose and meaning, spirituality and faith, mindset, passion, and unique talents emotional awareness and intelligence, meditation and recalibration, overcoming rejection, overcoming loss and mistakes, core values, intuition, leadership, confidence, courage, critical thinking, health and fitness, high performance 
sense of humor and service and contribution. Again, that's under the category of personal development. Wouldn't it be phenomenal if our kids learned all of this in school? Wouldn't it be phenomenal if adults learned this when they were young? Imagine, and we're both in our 50s, looking back on my life and how much work I've done on myself. And I look back and think, wow, if I had done this work as a little girl, just understanding one-tenth of what's on this list, where would we be today? Why aren't we teaching our kids these very basic foundational tools. And I'm so excited that you're homeschooling. I know we had talked about it. And for you out there who think, well, I only have a couple kids or I don't have the resources. If you have resources to send your child to a private school, I have nothing against private school, right? But if you have those resources, imagine pooling your resources with other like-minded parents and creating your own little learning pod where you control the curriculum. And that curriculum that you control can cover so much of what we talked about today. And that's something that Jim talks about. So imagine having control over your child's curriculum where the end product or the objective is, like you say, Rick, having an independent child at 18 years old who can navigate through the world, bring value to the marketplace, take care of themselves financially. I've got that in my son today. And I've got to tell you, it is so satisfying as a parent watching him, knowing that if I didn't wake up this morning, not only would he be great, he would be fantastic in life. He's going to have an amazing life because he's got such a wonderful foundation. You know, when uh, COVID was at its peak, I was with my niece uh, and one of my nieces, I have a lot of nieces and nephews, 44, I believe in total between grand nieces as well. But my niece is the exact same age as your son. And, you know, when COVID was at full height, uh, I had the opportunity to spend a day with her and, you know, she was addicted to her phone. She was all the things you would see for someone sitting at home, not working out, not enthused about life. And then I see your son who's the exact same age and he's worried about payroll and new clients and not enough time in the day to build this company. And how am I going to get all this work done? And how am I going to be the best version of myself? Why? because you taught him a lot of these things that were uber necessary for people to navigate in the world. Rick, and one other thing, the importance of a child having a specialized skill or specialized training, it's so important for, I think, an adult to navigate the world knowing that they can bring value to the marketplace no matter what happens, if they have a job or they have a business and the business fails, that they have something as a backup where they can bring value, they can feed themselves, they can feed their family. What I've seen that do for my son is give him a sense of confidence that no matter what happens, he can make a living, he can make money. People could be a jack of all trade, but a master of none. And we're seeing a lot of that. It's a lot of people that I've seen as adults, they get a liberal arts education, they graduate from college, but they really can't find a job. So specialization, whether you're a doctor or a lawyer, or you take the route of being a specialized entrepreneur like your son, that specialization is much better than a general education that doesn't have any specificity. And that's a big problem in the world. And that's why in the old days, in ancient uh, times, right up until about 100 years ago, people were uh, apprentices and they learned the skill that they can use for the rest of their life. And they were known as that thing. And that might be too specific, but you get the point that you, uh, there's a lot more that an entrepreneur with a specialized skill can do for the rest of their life than someone who is dependent on getting a government job or getting a big corporation to hire them because when the government or big corporations are not hiring, they're out of luck. If you're thinking, well, specialized training pigeonholes them too young in life. Well, you could think of that, 
But imagine if you had specialized training and then you learn how to be an entrepreneur in that area, right? It's something that Michael Gerber talks about, right? A, a technician who has an entrepreneurial seizure. Well, understanding entrepreneurship and understanding how to run a business is a specialized skill set. And that's a skill set, Rick and I, the businesses that we run, wouldn't we love to find an entrepreneur who understands how to run business? We would hire them in a New York minute if we could find somebody with that kind of talent to help us with our businesses. That is such a compelling and important skill set that is so lacking in the marketplace today. I couldn't agree more. And the purpose of these podcasts is to wake your consciousness up to some really simple life strategies and philosophies that will have you navigate the world better, have a more fulfilling life, have more understanding of how things really work, and have you come to your own conclusions. Everything Teresa and I present to you on these podcasts are meant to make you think. But at the end of the day, we want you to have more wealth, more and better relationships. We want you to have a future that you look forward to. And we want you to have complete life fulfillment. If you know anybody that would like to hear the messages that we put forth on these podcasts, just send them to moneyforlife.com. Thank you for listening to another episode. You have just experienced the Money for Life podcast. Brought to you by the 100 Year Saving Solution. Implement these strategies today and create a life by design. For more information, visit 100yearsavings.com. Have a blessed day.